Good morning all, this is Brian from From Earth to Heart. Just here today, we are about to go on a vacation. It's a short uh, trip. And just going through some of my final chores here. And I wanted to walk you through it and kind of talk about it because I think it's a good way to talk about how you can still have a pretty intense garden, but you can still get away. There are just things you need to take care of um, and different methods for for being able to do that. So yeah, let's get let's kind of let's get going. All right, yeah. So just got to finish feeding the chickens. Um, finished, we're working on these beds here. We replaced those two, which were going the opposite way. I wanted to line these up with our other beds we built. Those are, I think, the last two beds that were original when we got here. Uh -huh. All right, and we did introduce, finally move in the last three cream leg bars and with the rest of the flock here. They're still getting used to each other. That was about three, four days ago. Hey guys. Got some uh, treats for you. Hey, gals. Hey, guys and gals. Oh, my. We just had one of, I think, the speckled Sussexes started laying today, or um, in the last week. We've been getting a really small egg. Oop. So when it comes to, so when part of it, when it comes to being able to take time off away from your, your hobby farm, garden, homestead, whatever, there, there are a couple things you, you need to be able to do um, in order to do that. One is reduce the amount of chores that you need to do daily. And the way to do that, so let's say take, let's take chickens for example here. Have a feeder that does not require daily um, refilling. So that can see, so that means adjusting the size of your flock or the size of your feeder to uh, meet that requirement so that, hey, I don't have to do that every day. Even if it's temporary, right? Let's say you're normally into free ranging them, putting them in a trick and tractor. You can have a temporary pen that's enough room for them to still walk around because if you're going to be gone for, let's say, three, four days, do a long weekend, well, doing that, you can give them enough food, give them enough water that they can last that whole trip while you're gone. Now, there are preferred methods, uh, I would say, for the food front, having multiple days or even a week's worth of food is not a huge issue when it comes to water i would definitely say you should want to re still want you probably don't you can get away with a couple of days but more than uh two three days you really should be refilling it there are automatic waters or hook up to a hose just and it just keeps kind of refilling it as they drink so that's a great way to set up and that can be something you do temporary. I mean, honestly, um, as much automation as you can do, it gives you more time. I know some people might, I, I like it too. Like I, I am always someone who is like, oh, hey, I like to water. I like to be in the garden. But when you don't have to be constantly doing just the bare maintenance chores, that allows you to spend more time checking on the health of things, checking on pests, making sure your chickens are happy and healthy and just spending time with them instead of having, having to spend all your time running around to the last minute getting all your watering done, all right? And so automating your watering in general from both animals to your plants is one of the top ways all right you gotta go back in i know you like the grass that's all you want to eat is grass you are you're a fucking vegetarian until i give you bugs and it's fresh bugs and you like those too you love your grass 
There we go. And that was just some oyster shell. Uh, because I have a rooster, I am doing a, a general all-purpose feed, which other than calcium still has all the nutrients that layers need. But again, just minus the calcium and so with some oyster shell. That way, um, the layers when they're laying can take as much as they need. Now another meh, now another thing I would always recommend if you are going to go away, getting a farm sitter. They don't have to be every day. But again, this is where if you automate things, again with water timers, I have drip irrigation, we have sprinklers here. The orchard only needs to be watered once or twice a week. So I watered earlier this early this morning hand watered it because that's how we do it right now because I haven't gotten to figuring out the automation for it yet but since it's been since I don't have to water this I don't really have to water up here on the hill because I've got our drip all the way up on there all that really needs to be done is someone to check on the stuff in the greenhouse and even then while having it daily watered would be ideal as long as it's being heavily watered, it can get away with being watered every other day. So if you don't have someone who can literally farm sit or house sit, however you want to frame it, you can still have someone come by um, every other day just to do a couple of quick chores, check on the animals, give your water, and uh, other little chores that you might need. Again, everyone has their own particularly specific chores. Now, a couple other things I'm gonna do before I go is check on any pruning that needs to be done. Like here, we've got this tomato. It's growing uh, a little out of control here. Less out of control, just growing really well. And do any like harvesting, because make sure that things will be ready, that are ready now. Here, I'm gonna put you back. There you go. There you go. One big happy, happy thing. You have light for that cucumber. That might be the melon, actually. And so here, I want to harvest things that I think are just going to not make it by the time we get back. So I know this mustard, I harvested all the mustard on the hill. Now here, I'm going to harvest this so I can hang it up to dry. It's already, some of it has already started to shatter. So, you know, it's, I know it's ready, even though there are little flowers, but I feel it's just a diminishing return aspect. All right, here we go. There's one. Look at that guy. That is going to be awesome. All right, little one, you want to be there? That's fine. Mm. Getting major weeding. This, I think, is bindweed, unfortunately. I'm not sure how it got in here. But it was here when we... It was already in this bed, unfortunately. Um, and I just have not been over If it is bindweed, it's pretty much impossible to get rid of. So, awesome. Thank you, previous owners. I'm going to also get to the broccoli that looks like it's not going to make it while we're gone. We have a really nice broccoli is really coming through. I'm also going to start leaving some, letting some light in here, doing some pruning because the what was all overgrown that really helped with all the heat and dryness we've had protect the the carrot seeds as it was germinating. But now as they've matured a bit more, uh, letting a little more light in will really help them grow a little more vigorously. All right. There's that one. Ah. All right. Oh yeah, definitely a bunch of that crap hiding underneath it, unfortunately. And the reason I am pruning this and not pulling this is I want to leave the roots in there. Um, those will provide, and roots kind of are a good store of carbon. And also will 
help with uh, pathways as it rots for uh, soil improvement. Oh, and we're falling. There you go. <laughs> I missed you. I got you. So I'll, I'll hang those to dry with the others. But again, got plenty of time. These will basically break down over the winter anyways in the... Oh, sorry if blocked you guys out here. Oh, wow. There's a little pepper. All right. You're probably not going to do anything, but hey, you're still alive. I'll give you a chance. All right. I'll plant something here. I'll probably wait till we get back. All right, so the mustard, we'll hang that to dry. Yeah. This one is for sure going to bloom while we're gone if I do not grab you. All right. Things will produce side shoots. So we'll let them go. Yeah, you're gonna definitely bloom, it seems. here it'll decompose and that will not be a bad thing uh, but broccoli leaves are also edible so you can certainly um, saute them up like you would um, or cook them up in similar ways you would oh Swiss chard kale any other sort of green brassica crop will absolutely work that way. Um, here, I'm just, ah, well again, we're leaving. So not really gonna keep them and they'll be fine. And sort of a good leaf litter decompose. All right, look at that big boy. Look at that big boy. I think this will be the last one. All right. All right. A nice little harvest of broccoli. So we can do here. Oh. There we go. Hope you can see that. A little cucumber. Nice little pickling cucumber right there. Probably our first one. And then beano beans. Our runner beans. I definitely get them. Oh no, lost ya. Carrots, they're fine in the ground here. Ain't hurting nobody. Yeah, all right. Now you feel like you're missing something. I always miss these guys. I always miss some. Ah, look at that. You frickers are finally, fi finally flowering. Ah. I was wondering if these uh, pole beans would ever flower. So thankfully they are at least, so 
Not a waste there. Lots of biomass. At the very least. Alright, well, I'll probably we'll cut a bunch of it off and just kind of drop it as a mulch. Um, I when we pulled the I don't know if I mentioned it already, but when I pulled the greens, uh, I did some turnips, so they've all kind of done. I will probably do it next week. We're all kind of coming prune more in here, or I did a light prune, but it's a little more light in for them, just so they won't be too leggy. All right, I think over here is doing well. All right, any tomatoes? And sadly, some of our sweet 100 tomatoes are gonna ripen while we're gone. But that's okay. I pulled. Ah, peas are starting to come up. Good. How is this cauliflower? Small. He should be okay. Hey, you. You like being up top? They're still getting used to each other. That one likes to hang out up there. Yeah. All right. So I think. Do a quick little walk through. I think they're all good on this side. Western front is secure. Oh, there might have been a strawberry. Oh, look at you. Uh, there was a strawberry. Something liked it. Something liked it. Yeah, so we have a mix of everbearing and sort of like single crop. And sort of your general pros and cons of each is your everbearing, they're going to produce. Um, more over time and your others will produce a lot at once so if you like just to have some to graze on just kind of constantly eat over time uh everbearing are great if you like making jams and jellies and and sauces and all those things it's good to have ones that will produce more at once so you have enough of a batch to produce at one time before you start getting mold and, and you know because that can always be a pain if you've ever had that happen where usually if i've had it with tomatoes Especially with uh, indeterminants, they will go on and on and on. Um, but unless you have a lot, you know, it can be hard to have enough to harvest at any one time. Let's see how our blackberries are doing. Ooh, yeah, this is our black satin. You know, I probably not quite there. Mm. Oh, wait, those will be ready when we get back. Hollyhock doing well. Some pretty hollyhock. Borage from the bees. Oh, hello, look at you. Look at that guy. Can you see him? Oh, he's so covered in pollen. Hopefully you can see the bumblebee. He is covered in pollen. Happy bumblebee. Things are doing all right here. Now I fed the um, squash in, just to kind of provide some shade. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, all right. More hollyhock. Might get some raspberries this year. Right, blueberries have already been picked. Got maybe a few hanging out. I said all these guys will wait. I think our Szechuan will be ready at the end of the month. That's what I was reading. Anytime end of August, early September. So hopefully we'll have some actual Szechuan pepper. All right, and all of the seeds I replanted are doing pretty well, growing pretty vigorously. So hopefully that will, they'll be a little later. They won't produce as much, but that'll make up for some of the loss. All right, and the only thing here is I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna try and finish this. There's a couple other projects, but due to life, we didn't get to them, but we just switched it. I turned the dirt, as you can see, I piled it up in between. And then just cut it out. You need to do a little more leveling on this one on the right here. And I'll just kind of shove all that dirt underneath. And I'm gonna go grab some compost to top dress it. And we have some starts that need to go in. And then I'll reset the sprinkler. Uh, yeah. All right, I got a little morning harvest. Get these all before we're gone. So these will be waiting for us when we get back.